हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु कांडपाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट एम एस कॉलेज फॉर वीमेन बी कॉनेर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द पोएम वन डे आई रोथ हर नेम विच इज रिटन बाय एडमन स्पेंसर इंट्रोडक्शन टू द ऑथर एडमन स्पेंसर इज कंसिडर्ड एज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्री एमिनेंट और द प्रोमिनेंट पोइट्स ऑफ द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज ही वॉज बॉर्न इन लंडन इन द ईयर फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी टू और फिफ्टीन फिफ्टी थ्री लिटल इज नोन अबाउट हिज फैमिली और हिज चाइल्डहुड एक्सेप्ट दैट ही रिसीव्ड अ स्कॉलरशिप टू अटेंड द मर्च एंड टेलर स्कूल वे ही लाइकली स्टडीड लेटिन एंड ग्रीक ही वेंट ऑन टू स्टडी लिटरेचर एंड रिलीजन एट कैम्ब्रिज यूनिवर्सिटी स्पेम्ब्रुक हॉल receiving BA in 1573 and an MA in 1576 Spencer published his first volume of poetry The Shepherd's Calendar in 1575 and the first volume of poetry The Shepherd's Calendar in 1579 dedicating it to the poet Sir Philip Sidney He was also the author of The Fairy Queen which is which was published in 1596 It was a major English epic and Amorati and Apithalamion a sonnet sequence dedicated to his second wife Elizabeth Boyle Edmund Spencer was a man of his times and his work reflects the religious and humanistic ideals as well as the intense but critical patriotism of Elizabethan England His contributions to English literature in the form of a heightened and enlarged poetic vocabulary a charming and flexible verse style and a rich fusing of the philosophic and literary currents of the english renaissance entitled him to a rank not far removed from that of william shakespeare and john milton and because of his uh, for, because of this writing capability uh, charles lamb called him the poet's poet because of the high quality of his verse and uh, he also experimented with the sonnet form and developed a unique form which came to be known as spenserian sonnet now we move on to the poem uh, this is the text of the poem which i have already discussed in the previous video now we come to the theme of the poem Edmund Spencer wrote a sequence of sonnets entitled Amorati of its sonnet 75 is a part also titled One day I wrote her name upon the strand this sonnet is also titled One day I wrote her name upon the strand Edmund Spencer weaves a tale about the ocean love and immortality he writes about being at beach with his beloved and writing her name in the sand as expected a wave comes and washes away her name he tries it again with the same result the woman speaks up and states that it is unreasonable for him to continue writing her names as the wave will just continue washing it away she compares that to her mortality that eventually she will be erased from the earth just as her name is erased from the sand The speaker in this sonnet then replies that he will make her immortal by writing about her in his poetry that way their names and love for each other will live on forever so uh, this sonnet has been taken from the volume uh, collection amorati it is uh, numbered 75 in this collection it is about ocean love and immortality it is also about the a uh, great power of poetry it is written in a dialogue form now we come to the analysis of the poem one day i wrote her name is a 14 line sonnet that is a spenserian sonnet what is a spenserian sonnet a sonnet with three interlocked quatrains and a couplet written in iambic pentameter written about a woman that poet loves as he tries to eternalize eternalize he tries to immortalize her in verse so that she will live on forever the first four line show the futility of life or love 
or lasting forever, like writing in the sand. The speaker says that he does this, writing his sweetheart's love in the sand. But the waves come and wash it away twice. What the lover is doing? He is trying to write the name of his beloved on the sand. But again and again, the waves, they come and wash it, wash the name. One day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. The water tide comes and washes again, or make his beloved's name its prey. In the next four lines, the speaker's lady's lady love tells him that he works in vain. It is futile to write her name on the sand, immortalize her, a mortal thing. She tells that uh, it is futile to it is futile to write the name because again and again the tides they are the tide is coming and it is washing away the name uh, the beloved tells the poet that there is no use of writing her name because one day she will die or disappear from the earth there is no um, there is uh, uh, she, what he is doing, he is doing, he, he is, well, he works in vain, and uh, one day she will die or disappear from the uh, from earth, just as her name has disappeared with the coming of the wave. She knows that everything is mortal. Mortal means everything on this earth which has taken birth is going to come to an end. She says her name will be lost, wiped out as the. Uh, her body will fall to decay as all living things must in that moment she says her name will be lost wiped out as the wave erases the latter in the sand in essence she is telling him to pull himself together this is the way of life and death uh, she uh, she knows the reality of life that one who has taken birth is going to die so it is a futile task to immortalize her by writing her name on sand because one because everyone knows that man is a mortal being a mortal thing so to immortalized for i myself shall like to this decay the author's love for this woman is so great that he refuses to accept what she has said and strives to prove her wrong other things that are baser may die and rot. Baser means inferior, may die and rot. But he insists that by writing this poem, he will immortalize her. Now what he, this poem is in dialogue form and what he now says that, okay, uh, the baser things, the inferior things may die and are they are subject to death. But he insists that by writing this poem, he will immortalize her. Being romantic and idealist, the poet asserts that the gross, insignificant, sordid things might be the part of the transient world. But his beloved is a fulsome personality, a subject of immortality. So, uh, he feels that the less important things, they are going to get destroyed, but she is going to live forever because he is going to immortalize her by writing this poem. Not so called I. Let baser things devise to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. Thus, the poet wishes to articulate the love to his dear in his poetry of artistic excellence. The poetry he thinks will renew her love beyond their physical years. He will immortalize her by writing about her in poems through the lines of the poetry. Then even life, even after death in the empire of God will be renewed. Okay. My verse, your virtues rear shall eternize and the heavens write your glorious name where when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live and later life renew. This is how he is going to immortalize her, not only her beloved, but also their, uh, but also their love. All this world, all things in this transient world, is uh, um, they, it is going. They are going to die, rot, decay. But through his poem, he is going to immortalize. Her beloved, 
and he is going to uh, immortalize beloved and their love style of the poem one day i wrote her name is a 14 line poem now i'm going to discuss the style of the poem or few qualities of the poem one day i wrote her name is a 14 line sonnet written about a woman that poet loves as he tries to eternalize her verse so that she will live on forever spencer created a whole new sonnet form for his amoretti sonnet sequence this form became so famous that we call it the spencerian sonnet some other types of sonnets that you might be familiar with are petrarchan sonnet and shakespearean or english sonnet the sonnet is written in iambic pentameter with the rhyme scheme a b a b c d a b a b b c b c c d c d and e e uh, this i'm talking about spencerian sonnet with the rhyme scheme uh, if we talk about a simple sonnet that is a petrarchan sonnet that is written in written in iambic pentameter with the rhyme scheme a b a b c d c d e f e f g g which shows the pattern of rhyme scheme there is a rhyming couplet at the end of the poem which act as a summary of the previous 12 lines okay here i would like to tell you something about that petrarchan sonnet follows the rhyme scheme of a b b a a b b a c d e c d e then we come to the shakespearean sonnet it follows uh the pattern of a b a b c d c d e f e f and g g but there is a change in the spencerian sonnet it follows the rhyme scheme a b a b b c b c c d c d and e e the lyric poem touches on a classical theme the relation between time and immortality edmund spencer employs figurative language to ev- evoke not only imagery but also an emotional response from the reader in the poem one day i wrote her name spencer uses symbolism personification and alliteration to analyze the theme that everyone goes through a heartbreak he makes use of symbols that create a kind of an like uh, symbols we can uh, say he make uses of imagery images that create a image in the mind of the uh, reader he uh, personification uh, he give uh, human qualities to non living things and alliteration is like uh, using uh, it is a device uh, which uh, uses the consonants and the repetition of consonant sounds when the it, the it is a repetition of consonant sound it is called as assonance when there is a repetition of vowel sound it is called as um, assonance okay repetition of consonant sounds consonants and repetition of uh, vowel sound that is called as assonance okay for example one day i wrote her name upon the strand but came the waves and washed it away again i wrote it with a second hand but came the tide and made my pains a spray this quote indicates to the reader that spencer was re- recently heartbroken and is not over the girl within the that quote the author author uses alliteration to signify the softness that she left in his heart for instance waves and washed the use of were and were sounds okay also in the human nature there is also a predator and prey but in this poem it isn't always a human human characteristic admund personifies his the tides as the predator and his pain as his prey this is uh, the use of personification in the poem he personifies the tides giving the human qualities to the waves but i and made my pains his prey after he wrote her name in beach and uh, sand and again the tides came and washed her name and his pain away the author made something so common in life seem so uncommon a mortal thing so to immortalize the poem shows us a vivid picture that is the poet makes use of symbolism images the couple is along the seaside the man in the trying to write the lady's name on the sand but waves come and wash it away spencer metaphorically compares tide rising and falling to the process of life also in the sentence but came the tide and made my pain pains his prey the poet personifies the sea water to a beast and compares the name to his prey 
which implies that time and tide wait for no man and that everyone is doomed to die. The lady in this poem feels insecure about time fleeting while the man insists on our love shall live and later life renew. This is all about the poem. One day I wrote her name upon the strand. Thank you.